call the September or the uh, September, yeah, the yeah. September 20th uh, special meeting of the council to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Mr. Sharp? Here. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Krakevich? Here. Mr. Fritch? Here. Mr. Knipple? And correction approval of council minutes for September 6th. We have a uh, motion to adopt as written. So moved. And I'll second. Uh, please call the vote. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Kovic? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Sharp? Abstain. Motion passed 4 0. And correspondence. Rudy, you want to kick it off? Um, I had off. Just just a phone call, and, and I'm going to um, just pass that on to Diane when she has it. She, she's uh, kind of a focal on that. Pardon me? I'm going to pass it on to you, the, the phone call on the Lake, East Lake Street. I don't understand why you're passing it on to me. Well, uh, I'm, I got on my phone, I only got parts of it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I think ev other people. Well, whoever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Anything else? And that's all I had. Right. Doug? Uh, nothing from me. Nothing. I had a call basically uh, about the golf course. Other than that, pretty quiet. Mike? Well, actually, no. I got any. I got the same text about Lake Street. Go ahead with that. Signs. It's it was not just. It, I haven't really had a full conversation with the gentleman yet, so mm -hmm. he's looking for um, just having a conversation about stop signs or crosswalk Cross signs. Crosswalk and, crosswalk and signs. then uh, some whatever. So that was it, Mike. Uh, yeah, same phone call about crosswalks on uh, East Lake Street, and then I also did have some correspondence concerning repairs on the. Uh, band shelter and it's something we'll talk about with uh, the budgeting for some some repairs that are needed that we should take care of as the city so okay and Diane yeah I had several things um, meeting with people at farmers market and stuff like that that they stopped and asked several of them had to do with uh, um, questions about the sandbar, which we will be talking about during the meeting today. So I think um, probably better to just bring it up when we're discussing it. Is that okay with all of you? And, um, <clears throat> and another one was <clears throat> something that uh, I think can be brought up under the budget having to do with spraying in the parks, and I think we can do that when Rob, if Rob is I haven't looked if he's here or not, but maybe will be for the budget meeting. All righty. Anything else? Um, just the other one, which not should should I go a little? <laughs> I guess Rudy says I, yes. I, I was driving seventy miles an hour. I got pieces <laughs> of it. Okay. Basically, um, the request from a constituent saying our <clears throat> our ward is um, cons wants to put a crosswalk across East Lake to go from the north side of town <clears throat> to the south side of town, especially needed when kids are coming and going to school. And he did talk with Steve Wilkie about it already, uh, wanted to know if we could put up a sign saying pedestrian crossing because there's, there's just no protection. Um, <clears throat> I think Steve had told him that in order to do a sign, we have to do a crosswalk first. And um, I don't think we have, I don't believe the council has to act on getting a crosswalk, but I think evidently um, somebody has to tell the city department to put in a crosswalk. So that's why you all got phone calls from what I understand. And. Uh, I would concur, but you know, the one end of the crosswalk would be in our ward, and the other end of the crosswalk is in your ward, and you get the whole crosswalk. Okay, so um, that was why everybody got a phone call yeah. from.
from him. Maybe we can just ask Steve if that can be you know, taken care of. I think it is a need because it's a major road and there is no good place to cross. Yeah, I don't think there's any other crosswalks until you get all the way down. And they're not going to go. Park. They're not going to, there isn't even one there. So they're, you know. Yeah, well, until you get down. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to the middle school, you know, they're going to cross whether you want them to or not. Yeah. At least this way there would be a place to have them, to recommend they cross. We can't make them cross. Right. Okay, that was all that was. Alrighty. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions in public comment. Can I have that read, please? The public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda, unless the item is the subject of a public hearing. If your comments pertain to a public hearing, you are asked to hold your comments until the hearing. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not in, on the agenda if you've registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. State's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided. All right, thank you. Anyone want to address? Do we have a pen up there tonight? He signed in earlier. We do. Oh, yeah. wow, you're jolly on the spot. <laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, once in a great while I am on the spot. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I appreciate your time and, and listening to me. My, my name is Brian Kane. I live at 430 Metal Ridge Circle, and um, this is in, in reference to the, um, uh, the resolution um, 1639. No, I, I'm, I'm here tonight just to uh, state basically what I was instructed to state by my legal counsel regarding the resolution. Um, it, apparently, the, um, the, uh, all of the information, all of the documents have not been submitted yet per uh, Wisconsin Statute 893.80. So there is another document, a notice of claim that will have to be submitted before the claim is actually uh, disallowed by the, by the council or the city attorney. Um, he was in contact with, um, is it Vicki Schmidt? Can anybody help me there? Is it, um, Vic, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> glad to meet you. Um, uh, had you been contacted uh, by my attorney this evening or this afternoon? Yeah, this. shortly before mm -hmm. five, he called me. Yeah. So I intend to talk to the council about it when okay. we get to that item. Right. And and the only the recommendation was that it was it be tabled for another thirty days until this the, the notice of claim had been submitted per per the requ uh, requisite under the Wisconsin statute. So really, that that summarizes what I'm here for, and I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, Brian. Right. You bet. Thanks. Any others? Seeing none, we'll move on to the city manager's report. Steve? Uh, I provided several budget related documents. Um, the first one is the August report for 2016. Now we're doing it to date. The second one is the city manager's budget address. It's a short little item that you surely read shortly before you got here. Um, one is the league report, another is the state of cities, and then the final one is dark stores, which we'll probably at least discuss next council meeting, if not this one. Um, Kim, Kim Peterson was awarded a grant to participate in a um, training session, and I think, Mystic, we had two others that also were awarded grants this Heather, Heather Crawford received a scholarship this year, and Kristen Hosey just received a scholarship as well. So that whole trip's paid for, right? I'm is sorry, that, what? Is that the one to Nashville? Kim's is in Nashville, and Kristen's will be in Nashville. Heather's was for UW-Green Bay. Okay. I did provide you all with the inspection reports, right. and um, the final page on the 
The summary from the building inspector about the, yeah, right here, page three. I want you, you know, that we had discussed the life, the extended life of the building was five to 10 years. We discussed that the appropriate time to do it was while Highway 18 was, or Highway 89 was being redone in 18, maybe 19 now. Um, so uh, those are issues there. It was also discussed, you know, that if we, redo the building, we obviously, it's very similar to the old municipal building in that while the building is relatively structurally sound, once we start doing all the ADA and fire uh, codes and other types of codes that we have to comply with, the building would be a bathroom and a kitchen. Um, so uh, those were some of the reasons why we looked at a more substantial structure. We haven't really finalized that yet because it's in a feasibility study, uh, but <clears throat> Those are tied together into these three reports. Those reports, there's actually four there. There is the report from the building inspectors, which was done as part of the 2015 budget when the council asked us to have the building inspector write reports for all the municipal buildings and the maintenance that would be required on them. Um, and that came in in March. Um, as a part of this report, we asked the fire inspector to do one. So there's a fire inspection report attached. And then there is the public health department's report attached to that. And then the final one is after you guys reviewed those inspections, you asked for an insurance company inspection, and that is also attached. Any questions for Steve? They were part parts of executive session. Um, I assume that it's after six months and we haven't taken any action on them so that they're now public record. There isn't any blanket for There isn't? Mm -hmm. So they're still... As long as there's a reason for something to remain confidential, there isn't a blanket rule on how long it stays confidential. And that's a decision that's made by the city clerk. Mm. Is it confidential? Somebody would have to do an open records request and then it would be evaluated. Okay, anything else, Steve? No, not unless you have any questions. Any questions? I can address the crosswalk. I had been asked about several different locations for the crosswalk. Uh, and until there was a decision made on what location would work best, um, there hadn't been any decision on where to put a crosswalk or where to recommend locating a crosswalk. Um, we, and I, okay, the intersection is odd. And, um, and so if you put it at the back end of the one loop driveway, you're significantly off the corner of the uh, south side. If you put it at the corner of the south side, it goes to an island in the middle on the north side. In the middle of that island is a great big telephone pedestal. So you, that ramp would run right into a telephone pedestal. You couldn't actually come up onto that. So <clears throat> then the debate was, as well, you have to go to the far side of the street. There are two crosswalk ramps there, we would just paint one there, but <clears throat> then the, the question was, is are we doing it, you know, if we're doing it just to put it there, that's that's fine. That The fact that that's going to be the spot where they cross is very unlikely. There is another one down at the next street in Washington, and there is one back at, at Madison. So those are conversations, but you have to tell me. And, and you can't actually put up a pedestrian crossing sign until there are actually white lines across the street. Just for the record, we do have one of those crosswalks you're describing, which doesn't go to at the, at the top of Mulberry Street at the intersection by the medical center up there. There's one of those that goes from one side at the corner, but goes to the other side in the middle of the block or in, in the block. 
So there is some precedent set for having that kind. Yeah, we, we wanted to have a crosswalk there because that's a pretty busy intersection. Um, but the intersection doesn't line up straight. It's a really unusual intersection. So um, we, we did pull one back. Where do the kids cross now? Anywhere they feel like. And maybe the police chief could tell us because I haven't <coughs> been out there to see. We're talking about crossing on Lake Street. Yeah. Um, well, like from Dollar go. General downtown. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of the kids are probably crossing over by. Uh, old. There's, there's a crosswalk in front of my house, and I see it being utilized. Which after school, that's a uh, corner of Washington and uh, Lake Street. Yeah. I knew there was one just one block down. Well, it doesn't have to be just one, does it? No, you can have. You can have them all the way around the intersection if you want. Maybe we should put in a couple and then play them there. I don't have any problems with it. I I don't think we can discuss it here and now. No. No. That's but I think do we have to put? Does is this something that needs to be discussed at a meeting or is this just the everyday work here? It can I be just everyday work. Just that's what we I just have to. I just have to look at it and make sure we know what we're doing and why. Okay. Well, do we need to put it on the agenda then? No, we don't. Okay. I don't think so. No. No. Okay. Unless you want to, but I don't want to. Just make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we can get and our nope. staff to take care of nope. that. Yep. So we're moving on then. Mm -hmm. All good. Uh, let's see, managers, council. Uh, board committee appointments, multi-use facility ad hoc. Um, there's, I'd like to get the list, list the names. Uh, I think you all got it in your packet. There's, there were, we got an overabundance. I want to thank actually everyone for, for uh, signing up and showing some willingness to volunteer. Um, the seven I chose, if you'd read the names, please. Blaze Knipple, Carol Burrows, Pamela Strike, Ben Dayton, Sally Crescent, Jane Riedel and Ginger Hartman. And I believe I need a motion uh, to appoint those or to accept those. So move. We have a second. Second. Call the vote, please. Mr. Foster. Aye. Mr. Kirkovich. Aye. Mr. Fritch. Aye. Mr. Shar. Aye. Mrs. Fritch. Aye. Motion passed five zero. And then the Doug and Mike are the council will be the council rep. So that is now our seven and two, and um, good luck. I look forward to hearing where we're going with that. Uh, miscellaneous licenses, I think we can, unless there's an objection, read all three of these names at once. Yeah. Read them, please. Wendy Dix, Levi Shukagel, and Jeremy Rowe. And a motion to grant tavern license. So moved. A second? Second. Call the vote, please. Mr. Krakowicz. Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Right. Discussion decision sandbar lease. Uh, motion 16921. Can we have that one read, please? City Council motion 16 9 2 1. Authorizing the city manager to execute a lease amendment between the City of Lake Mills and Herring Enterprises LLC. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Section 1, that the lease agreement between the City of Lake Mills and Herring Enterprises LLC requires an amendment which is attached here to and made a part hereof and which is hereby approved. Section 2, that the City Manager is authorized to execute said lease amendment and take such actions as necessary to implement amendment to the lease agreement. The City does hereby approve the amendment to the lease agreement and authorize the Council President to sign the motion. All right, we have a motion to adopt. So moved. A second. Second. All right, and discussion. John is here if you want to talk to him. Um, the primary issues that we have here are we'd originally had a $20,000 bond requirement. The bank actually sent in a 15. It was like, oh, we're not going to go through that again. Let's just accept the 15. And there were a couple others, minor, some small minor issues that were different than the original. And we said that they weren't any big deal. And so we 
We just said let's modify it and, and take what we got. So we modified it. And this is pretty much what we talked about. We're all good. All right. Um, I I just need to say something that that I alluded to in in pub in the um, uh, the um, correspondence. I did get people came up and talked to me and wanted to know what this was in the paper talking about how uncooperative the city was being with the sandbar. And I am very confused because I thought we were being very cooperative. And uh, unfortunately, I guess I hear now that we still cannot discuss the closed session request the thing. But um, the, there is a statement made in the paper by a member of your your group, John, that um, uh, that the building um, that the work that was required was not important work. Or I can I can find it here and, and quote it. But um, basically, Trivial, that I think they said. hmm. I think Tri the word was trivial. Yeah, yeah. started. Okay, I'm trying to find. I should have highlighted it. Um, and uh, I guess I was a little taken back because I thought the council was being very cooperative, John. And um, to have this show up in the paper and then have people from the community call me and say what's going on was was very upsetting to me personally. Um, and. Well, um, I just, I guess my feeling is, is that in the future, maybe both of you should be coming to the meetings we have. So both of you know, since you're co-owners, that both of you know what's being done and what the agreement is, because I do not like this kind of double talk. You're happy, she's not. Get, get, get on the game ball here. We can't have two teams. So um, that, I just want to express that that's where I am, and uh, and so are other people that called me. So right. you know, and I'll I'll chime in. And I I read the um, I can't call it an article; it's a story. So I read the story, and you know, they're trying to sell newspapers. I think he's doing his job, you know, and that's how I look at it. Um, not necessarily all fictional, uh, <laughs> not not necessarily all the truth. So. Um, wasn't overly concerned. Any other questions? Well, yeah, and then, yes. As far as the city, that you know, that this was this was done by the um, by the inspector, and it was based on ordinance and law. So, I mean, that, that that's all we did is followed the law. So, um, in public safety, so I, I feel good about it. I thought I thought it went rather well. Um. I do have that quote, and these, the, it was a quote from your wife um, that says, the stuff that held us up this spring was all very trivial. And I'm very sad to hear that the closed session is not public yet, because I think the public would be very in agreement with the council that the stuff we had required was anything but trivial. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Well, Diane summed it up pretty All well. Right. And we have a motion, second call vote, please. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? No. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Krakowicz? Aye. Motion passed 4 1. Uh, resolution 1637, conditional use. Can I have that one read, please? Resolution 16 37. Conditional use permit Central States Tower, Verizon Wireless, and City of Lake Mills 200 Water Street. Whereas the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, pursuant to the authority conferred by Wisconsin State Statutes, has established certain standards and procedures for the use of land and zoning within the corporate limits of the City of Lake Mills. And whereas the City of Lake Mills Title 10 Zoning Code has certain requirements for permitted accessory and conditional uses in the Public Industrial Overlay District, Zoning District, and whereas the owner, City of Lake Mills, and let's see, Central States Tower, LLC, and Verizon Wireless, LLC, of subject site described in the application incorporated herein by reference has requested that a conditional use permit be granted to allow for a communications tower in the downtown business district and public industrial overlay district. And whereas the city manager, consultants, and city staff have reviewed that application 
documents submitted and have made recommendations concerning approval of said amendment subject. And whereas public hearing concerning the requested conditional use permit was held on the 30th day of August 2016 after due notice to solicit testimony from the public, and whereas the Planning Commission has met and reviewed the evidence and testimony submitted and has considered all the available factual evidence concerning the requested action, and whereas the Planning Commission has recommended that the City Council of Lake Mills grant said conditional use permit for the subject site with the following conditions. One, the conditional use permit will not be authorized and the site plan not deemed approved until the site plan meets all requirements of the ordinance as required by city code. Two, the conditional use permit shall be restricted to the portion of the property at 200 Water Street that is subject to a long-term lease with the city of Lake Mills. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lake Mills City Council accepts the findings of the Planning Commission and grants the conditional use permit with the two conditions as stated above. All right, thank you. Uh, motion to adopt Resolution 1637. So, so moved. And a second? Second. A second. All right, and discussion? I just had one little, just a little piece of information <clears throat> that came out during our uh, planning commission meeting that if if it was decided that they were going to put more than two carriers on that pole, we would have to have a little bit more property. But at this point right now, it's only Verizon and then whoever comes next, there'll be plenty of space and property to put another carrier up there such as AT&T or whoever and they said that if uh, we had it if they were to add another one that it would require some more ground space so just so we're all so right now we're limited to two. we're limited to two who gets to make the decision about what other company comes in is that by bid good question no they do tower they owner yeah yeah we get the rent they get the yeah. decision they get to, yep do we get notified when they do do that? Will you notify us when they do do that? Good. Anything else? Call the vote, please. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Kukovich? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Resolution 1638. Can we have that read, please? Resolution 16 38, supporting the Lake Mills Police Department. Whereas the men and women of the Lake Mills Police Department serve our community with honor, dedication, and integrity as they provide a valued service. And whereas the members of the Lake Mills Police Department have devoted numerous hours making contributions to all operations of the city while exhibiting the highest level of loyalty to the city and showing enthusiasm for the city. And whereas the officers of the Lake Mills Police Department have shown resolute attention to the community, constant professionalism, and ability to understand and respond to the needs of the people they serve have contributed to the constant improvement of Lake Mills. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Lake Mills is hereby recognized the dedicated public service and career accomplishments of the individuals of Lake Mills Police Department and pray for them and their families. Right. A motion to adopt? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Maybe? I just want to personally thank the, the police department and, and also the deputies and the uh, the troopers that, that uh, serve this community. And, I know you guys put your uh, lives on the line every time you put your uniform on and you know it's not gone unnoticed and and I know for myself and and uh, my neighbors that we all appreciate you and thank you very much right. well, I, I just have one thing if I were a negotiator, I would have this amendment sitting right on the table for the next contract. <laughs> and anything <laughs> that comes up, wave it very high. Uh, that's what I have a, with a problem with this amendment. I believe the chief has, would like to speak. Yep, you want some? Do we, do we need to waive the rules? Uh, do we need to waive the rules on this one? No, no. Okay. he's a department head. There you go. Okay. Well, I just, uh, I, I don't want to eat up too much time here, but I do want to uh, thank all the uh, council members uh, and, and the, uh, the citizens of Lake Mills that, that you uh, uh, represent so well. Uh, this resolution means a lot to us. It's obviously not the most popular time to be involved in law enforcement. And uh, we do have an outstanding team of officers and dispatchers that work for Lake Mills Police Department that are truly dedicated to this community and our citizens. And uh, it's 
it, we've had a lot of uh, citizens coming up to us, coming up to me, and uh, showing their support. And uh, this is just one step uh, further uh, that is just, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's very well appreciated by me and, and by my staff uh, that, that you have taken the time to recognize us uh, for the work that we do and, uh, and uh, put it into the uh, form of a resolution. So I'd like to thank council uh, and our citizens uh, that you represent as well. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Great idea. Just to show how, uh, I guess, uh, how considerate our officers are, they all took the backs and make sure that there's plenty of roles. Uh, all sitting in the bag. <laughs> Not a lot of hair. I think you want, don't we want to face the other way so the camera can get them? Oh, yeah. Chief, you might want to talk into the microphone as Thank well. Thank you. Please. Okay. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. You be able to see, or uh, you need to back up a little bit. No, they're good. They're good. Well, they were, walk well, towards well, the sound well, of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need to turn around. You can trust them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, starting off on this end here, we have uh, Renee Fryer. She's a uh, dispatcher uh, records uh, clerk for the uh, police department has been with us for a, a very long time and does an outstanding job. Next to her, her we, we have uh, Officer Doug Messman, uh, Sergeant Witte. Uh, next to him, we have Officer Wayne Wallace. We have our newest officer in the middle there, uh, Jared Fish. Uh, did you want, have anything to say, Jared, or nothing prepared? Okay, good. Um, one of our night shift officers, uh, Dave Fritchie. Uh, my right-hand man, Captain Selk, next to him. Uh, officer Troy Astrike, our school officer and community officer. And uh, on the very end, uh, Brandon Cedarwall. And uh, we are missing uh, some of our other uh, folks tonight, some of our part-time officers, and uh, one of our night shift uh, officers, Jess Johnson, and uh, Terry Hines, uh, who also had another commitment and wasn't able to be here. Uh, Terry is one of our records uh, clerks and dispatchers as well. And uh, on my behalf again, and uh, on behalf of our, our entire staff, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, guy. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, I have one comment to make before we vote. Yes, ma'am. Okay. My only regret on this whole thing would be that we did this at a time where it could be misconstrued to mean something that I don't think any of us mean. Um, I, I think we currently have the best police department this city has seen. And if I had my way about it, I would change the time of this to something where it's not hooked up with every other people and you know things in the world so please know that this is for you personally okay thank you thank you well said well said call the vote please mrs fritch aye mr foster aye mr kirkovich aye mr fritch aye mr Sharp. aye motion passed five zero all right uh resolution 1639 we want to read that please Resolution 16-39, Brian and Rebecca, Rebecca Kane claim against the city. Whereas the city of Lake Mills received the attached claim for damages from Brian and Rebecca Kane for damages to a sailboat when on May 18, 2016, the sailboat's mast struck a power line at Sandy Beach, which is owned by the city of Lake Mills. And whereas the city's electric utility incurred damages as a result of the sailboat striking the power line, and those damages are also attached here too. And whereas the city's insurer has reviewed the claim and has presented information to the city council regarding the claim. 
and whereas the Lake Mill City Council, having considered the claim and the information presented, presented to it, may act on the claim by granting it or denying it, or the council may disallow the claim by simply doing nothing and allowing the 120-day period in which to act to expire. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lake Mill City Council has reviewed the claim and accepts the recommendation of the insurer and city attorney and hereby denies the claim in its entirety pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 893.80 and does direct the city clerk to provide proper notice of this action by certified mail to the claimant and their attorney. All right. And then, Ricky, we look in the table. Um, I heard from the attorney for the claimant um, just at the end of the day today asking that it be tabled for 30 days. I'm a little bit concerned because of the time limits associated with within 120 days of the happening of the event um, is when the notice of claim needs to be submitted. That did occur within the 120 days, but now we have this other thing of the amount of the damages. Well, we already know the amount of the damages. We've known that for a number of months. The only thing that's an unknown is that there are apparently some storage fees in addition to it. I don't think whether you have the storage fees at your fingertips or not is going to change your mind on whether or not you're going to disallow the claim. The reason for disallowing the claim is it shortens the statute of limitations. It doesn't mean that the claimant can't sue. It just means that the claimant needs to <coughs> sue within six months rather than a number of years from now. Um, our insurance company has made that recommendation. I've made that recommendation. You can table it, but I can't guarantee that with all the nuances of case law and statute that you're not necessarily going to be in good stead in terms of not screwing up your time limitations. So I don't believe that the claimant is really going to be harmed by you going ahead and taking action on it tonight, but I can't guarantee that the city isn't going to be harmed by waiting the 30 days. I, don't, I fail to see what 30 days is going to provide for the claimant. Um, we already know the uh, estimate of the damages. Um, it, we've known that since, I believe, June, and um, the insurance company has reviewed it. So I'm, I would recommend going ahead and taking action tonight. But you could table it for two weeks, but I certainly wouldn't recommend you do it for 30 days. Um, having heard that, is there anyone uh, a motion to adopt Resolution 1639? So moved. No second? Second. Discussion? Call the vote, please. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Krakowicz? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. And ordinance 1164. We have a motion to remove that from the table. <coughs> we need that one, right? I'm sorry. It's currently tabled. I need a motion to remove it from the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moved. So moved. Yep. Second. And second. Um, I need a ordinance 11. Oh, I vote on that, vote. please. Mr. Krakowicz? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharf? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. And ordinance 1164. Can we have just a title read? Ordinance 1164, amending vendors' licenses. All right. And this one. Um, Actually, I suppose we get a motion before we have a discussion. I'm going to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 1164 as it's written. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right. And um, for discussion, this is actually the one that came about with Bartles Beach. And one of the things that was tabled, uh, Mr. Doyle was looking to do something down there at Manley's. Uh, Manley's currently has the availability to put a conditional use permit in and reopen its concession window. Um, which is kind of where I think at the very first reading is what I, I wanted Pat to do. Um, if that happens, unlike Sandy Beach where the property is city owned in a park, I don't believe we need to do an amendment. Um, and so that's why I put this back on. Um, the discussions you know, with, with uh, Doyle and Manley's have come to the point where they, they know now it's, it's available. Conditional use is available. Who opens it? Be it Doyle or be it Manley's or be it someone else? 
um, is where the question was for Pat. So um, more than likely, Manleys are thinking about doing it themselves. So that was the discussion I had with Pat. Um, I brought this back thinking rather than let it sit, we just wanted to either vote it up or down and let it go from there. So in other words, if I'm hearing you correctly, selling from the old Yep. One of one of the things that yeah, okay. so well, one of the things Pat really wanted was nostalgia. That's why he wanted to be down there. And to me nostalgia was the window. And there, that is possible, right? Conditional use is available for that. They're looking at it. Manley's are moved back into town now. And so there is an option. I mean that's not I mean that, that to me just... that's nostalgia to me. That was that was kind of the whole thing. So um, I brought it back just yeah, wanted to see if it was And that's actually not it's not park, park property, property, so and doing this doesn't do no. Nope. And the and the one or, the one thing is yeah. we did look into at, at Parks Board. We looked into what it would take um, for someone to make money down there, and and literally a food truck was brought up and some other stuff. And and I think I think the window down there is where it belongs. I mean that would be the, the perfect place. So. And the selling at the window, if that should ever be proposed for a conditional use would not be in any way affected by this? No, it wouldn't. Not at all. Okay. So. Yeah, another question that's come up for me is, suppose somebody wants to go down, uh, some volunteer organization, nonprofit wants to go down and they want to take and have some kind of uh, fundraising activity, this, amendment then would deny anything like that pretty much selling down there yes. so, any, Rudy, any? No, I don't, I don't like it. so so just to reiterate if this gets if if we say there's no selling in Spartles Beach it does bar <laughs> selling in the beach area in, in the, the park. park in the park yeah. But if Manleys want to do something with their personal building, which is not part of the park, they have the right to tr try to get a conditional use permit to do that. That is correct. So, and just to clarify. Steve, um, um, back to um, the previous question. It's on item C, the person, club, organization, or group corp corporation has been authorized a special permission, yeah, they could sell them. They could. Yeah. 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 yeah, as long as the council has approved it, yeah. you could have fundraisers down there um, if it's from okay. one of these organizations. And I believe that would organizations. come from here and, and not be just a permit from the parks, correct? Right, it would yeah. come from so the council. It, I mean, it's not disallowed, but they can't just go to the parks department and say, here's my $10. They would need yeah, a special <laughs> dispensation. Correct. From yeah, actually, it says council or parks and forestry director. So. Yeah, but that's only showing Commons Park, Sandy Beach, and Rotary. Not Bartles Beach. Not Bartles. Right. So yes. we have to amend that. Well, or do we? Well, yeah, it is limited to Sandy Beach, Rotary, and Commons Park. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I say leave it. I like say it leave it alone. I think if Manleys want to open that up and do a conditional use permit and go through those hoops, we're That's good to go. fine, then, but we have somebody responsible for it. I think what part of our concern was is that, you know, how do you con how do you control who comes in, who goes out, what kind of people they are? This way, the yep. only people who have the right to do that are them. And by permit, so. And by permit, so I'd say leave it alone. Anything else? Call the vote, please. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Krakowicz? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Uh, Ordinance 1170, golf cart crossings. Uh, can I have the title read for that one, please? Ordinance 1170, creating and regulating the use of golf cart crossings. And this is third reading. Um, we have a motion to adopt Ordinance 1170 and do we have to, uh, 
Yeah, which one are we? Do we have to, you know, these <laughs> honestly should have been labeled dash one, two, A, B, C, something, but I, there are three on here, so. Um, yeah, so which one are we doing? Yeah, I didn't put them all into one possible amendment because I wanted you to be able to grapple with them separately. Um, the one thing that I would strongly recommend that you do amend is include the golf cart crossing on Sandy Beach Road. Um, that was inadvertently missed, um, but then in our discussions with the PD about golf cart crossings, it came to my attention that, oh, that's right, we have one on Sandy Beach Road. That needs to be added. So but the other one is the, the amendment that deals with reflective materials. And Mr. Krakevich did raise, a, a, I thought, a valid question to me after the last meeting when we talked about this was, how is somebody on a golf cart going to know that they have to have the reflective materials before they cross and go out into the street. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know that you would necessarily want to throw up a whole bunch of signs all over the place that say, oh, you have to have reflective material after dusk. Um, I don't know. Um, but if you wanted to amend it to make that be a requirement, I guess we can grapple with how people can be put on notice about that if that's what you're going to add. But that would be the second amendment that, that you could consider with what you've got in your packet. So the first amendment you would, would like is under 617A, basically would have with Sandy Beach Road. Sandy Beach Road yeah. Right. All right. Um, so moved. So you, a motion to amend the Sandy yes. Beach Road and a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Call vote, please. And second. She's taking notes. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Krakevich? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Okay, and then um, with that, do we have a motion to adopt Ordinance 1170 as amended? So moved. And a second? Second. Call the vote, please. So we're not going to do anything with the other part at this yeah. time. At this time, and, and I, it is a valid point. How do you both mm -hmm. okay. control and mm -hmm. educate that this is what you have to have without? Okay. Fine. I mean, we'd have to have a four-foot sign up showing. Well, you have to reflect the tape here and here. It's a lot of, mm -hmm. yeah. So, in other words, you prefer to talk about it some more, and then well, I I'm gonna and then amend it well, later. Well, pass this right, and then if we want to do that later, we'll have attorney draw up all the language that needs to be written and figure out what the cost is and decide then. Mm -hmm. Well, the golf carts have headlights, right? Not all of uh, them. Um, no, not uh, all. It depends. Big flashlights? <laughs> some do. <laughs> I, they they've got some on TV right now that are pretty big and pretty powerful. <laughs> <laughs> but I do believe when they're crossing roads, I mean, that vehicle has, if it's at night and it's no lights, it's a ticketable offense. I mean, much like you can't yeah, drive I'm just thinking under that the influence in a golf cart is still a ticketable offense if you're on a road. I, I think that's already covered. It may be. Maybe, maybe what we should do is pass this and then send it to the police chief and ask him, is is the rest of this covered by regular by, by regular regulations yeah. and let's get that right. piece so did we have let's a motion? not make vicky work any harder than we have to did we have a motion to adopt the amended in a second no, we call did the, that call the vote please mm -hmm. mrs fritch aye mr foster aye mr Krakovich. aye mr fritch aye mr Scharr. aye motion passed five zero okay and recommendations for future agendas Anything, anybody? I'd like to um, have a closed session at 6 o'clock at your October 4th meeting so that you can meet with the insurance attorney who is representing the city in the Walgreens matter. Um, uh, she would like to have a, a time to meet with you to discuss a possible offer of settlement. And um, by doing it at 6 o'clock, we don't have to have her sitting here um, charging the insurance company, which ultimately comes from us anyway, in terms of how much we've got to spend. 
um, while she's waiting for us to go into closed session. So that's why I recommended six o'clock. If that will work for you, all of you. For the record, I will actually be not here at the next one. I will be moving my son to Tampa. So I will not even be in the state. So what can I do? He got a job. I want him out. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, then you got a grandson. How far does your wife want to yeah. see him go? No. He, well, yeah, we just had a grandson six oh, weeks ago, so he's taking my grandson and leaving. So oh, yeah, no. She does not want to see him go at all. So. Darn. Um, yeah, and you're good to go, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John would like permission to speak, if that's okay. Sure. Do we need to waive the rules, or are we? Yep. No, we the rules. I get a motion. What? No. Do we have to? Because you don't have to. But because no, 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 no. That's not oh. what I meant. I meant we. The item was on the agenda, so should, we still need to. Okay. If Did if you, you can confine it to the it. sandbar lease okay. amendment, it somehow corral okay. it under that heading it would we, be okay we have a motion and a second to waive the rules call you want to call the vote i'm sorry i didn't catch you in the motion push. rudy rudy second diane thank you waive the rules call the vote mr foster aye mr kirkovich aye mr fritch aye mr Shar. aye mrs fritch aye all motion right john passed five zero thank you sure come on up Try and kind of figure out how to scope it into that. Okay. The amendment was based on some improvements that needed to be done at the sandbar. Um, those improvements were needed. Um, I feel the article in the paper uh, stated that unjustly. Um, there were electrical problems that needed to be fixed that I didn't know existed. That the electricians found um, that were were pretty bad. They're in the basement, and the basement is a crawl space, a four-foot crawl space, which is basically a dirt floor. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the rotten wood in the building is basically because there's no basement in the building. It's it's dirt underneath 75% of the building. Um, the uh, entrances were. Uh, public buildings doors need to open out and uh, the screen doors opened in there are things that needed to be done that I just didn't know you know the rules basically or the laws um, I trust the building inspector about what he saw and the insurance company about what he saw and they inspected a lot more than what I see I, I know the buildings in bad shape but I trust they know their job a lot better than I know their job. Uh, not any more than I would let, expect them to come in and tell me how to run the restaurant. So uh, I 100% trust what they've said is right for the building, right for Sandy Beach. Um, I, I was telling Steve um, 25 years ago, a council a lot like this gave me a chance of a lifetime. And um, it was a four to one vote too. So uh, I, I respect the process and I trust what you guys do is right. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. And I, I don't like the stuff that's put on Steve that's being publicly or emailed or on Facebook, whatever it might be. It's not Steve's problem. He didn't do this, so. And as far as what my wife said in the paper, that's kind of on me. I was getting frustrated with, we could not find anybody to do the work. And it was like months at a time, we couldn't find anybody. And I'm going home frustrated and making comments. And I'm sure that's probably where that came from. So that's all I have to say. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. No, just I, I want to thank, thank you. I think that clears up some things. And, and I appreciate you coming on up. Okay, thank you. Um, back to future agendas. So we have the meeting. Anything else? All right.
think we are adjourned and what do we got five ten minutes we'll have our about five minutes or so we'll get together for budget mm -hmm. Thank you.